Welcome to Ask Dr. Abby Presents. Today, I'm gonna to do a 10 minute solution to stop fighting and start communicating. So give me just 10 minutes right now and you'll have a great new skill to stop an argument and start communicating. Here's how disagreements usually go. You say your side, your partner says their side, and you go back and forth discussing the truth as you see it. All the while, you're trying to convince your partner that you're right and they're wrong while they're doing the same thing. What happens is that no one is really listening and you end up in the same argument over and over again. Sound familiar? This leads to feelings of helplessness, frustration, hopelessness, and even rage. There's a great tool you can use to get out of this dead end cycle so you can start communicating and start feeling understood by your partner. The solution is to stop talking about the facts and to start talking about your feelings. Let me explain. The problem with an argument is that everybody becomes a lawyer and you end up focusing on your proof or evidence and feelings end up being ignored. If five people see a car wreck from five different positions, you're gonna get five different accounts of who's at fault or how the accident happened. Everyone has their own point of view. Everyone thinks they're right because everyone has this different viewpoint. This is what happens in your personal relationships as well. I want you to stop focusing on being right and getting your partner to believe or agree with your side of things. Instead, focus on how you're feeling. The wonderful thing here is that your feelings can't be wrong. So while someone could continue to argue with you about the facts of a situation, they can't tell you that you don't feel a certain way. It's harder for the other person to tell you you're wrong or debate what you're saying since they're your feelings. Let me give you a quick, great example of this. I was working with a couple, Cindy and Brian, who had separated for a few months, but had recently decided to work on things and had moved back in together. Two days later, Brian invited his parents to come and stay with them for two weeks. Well, Cindy told Brian that she was upset he'd invited them. He responded angrily, saying things like, I never get to see my parents and they've done so much for us, it's the least we can do. He immediately focused on the content of what she was saying, not how she was saying she was feeling. He was going on and on with the facts, which were all true, by the way. Cindy waited until he had said his piece and she listened attentively. She then said, that's all true. I have no argument with what you're saying. I'm telling you that I'm upset that you're inviting them to stay with us since we're barely back together and I'm still feeling shaky, scared, and unsure. Cindy did everything right because she did three things that will help move you from anger to listening and communicating. First, she empathized before doing anything else. She said, that's all true, which showed Brian she was listening and accepting of his side of things. Second, she stayed away from the content. She didn't discuss his parents coming, uh, and how much they'd done or not done for them, or Brian's feelings that he didn't get to see them often enough. None of that, she left that all alone. Third, instead of answering Brian's argument points, she simply told him her feelings. This approach not only diffused the argument, but Brian made the decision to wait to have his parents visit. He did that because he could hear her when she spoke to him in this specific way. He felt understood himself, and was then open to understanding what Cindy was feeling. This opened the door to new actions and working together instead of being at odds. When there's less or no focus on content and feelings take the center stage, there's not so much someone can argue or debate. What are they gonna say? You're not allowed to feel that way? No, that's possible, but it's not common, believe it or not. Even if your partner continues to challenge you, remember to keep coming back with how you're feeling. Use this tool consistently and you'll start to see a difference in how you feel after a disagreement. Instead of frustration and hopelessness, you'll find some self-confidence and even some sanity. So using this three-step process means that you would one, empathize, two, you would not talk about content or the facts or anything like that, 
And three, you would share your feelings about something. Now, this all sounds simple, of course, but it's not always that easy, especially in the heat of an argument. So to make this really actionable, I want to walk you through an awesome tool I use with my couples to get two feelings and stay away from the facts. It's called the I feel exercise. Basically, the I feel exercise is a formula for getting it right every time. And it goes just like this. I feel X when you Y and I need Z. <laughs> so I feel when you and I need. That's the, that's the exercise. That's the magic formula. So in this case, Cindy could have said, I feel scared and sad when you invite your parents here so soon after we've reconciled, and I need a little more time before we start having visitors. Brian could have argued with this, and that often happens, don't get me wrong, it will. And he might have still had his reaction of, well, I never get to see my parents, and they've done so much of us for us, it's the least we can do. But what I would instruct Cindy and you to do is to stick to the I feel formula and say it again, just with slightly different words. So maybe she would have said, I'm just telling you that I feel overwhelmed, nervous, and sad when you invite people here without my permission, and I need us to sit down and please discuss it without all the anger. It takes two people to have an argument. If you stick to the I feel exercise, your partner will eventually run out of steam because you're not debating or disputing any facts. There's nothing to argue anymore. You're just telling them how you feel about a particular situation. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind with the I feel exercise, this whole formula, to make it super successful. And, here, and here's, here's the few things I want you to keep in mind. One, you have to start with an actual feeling. It's not... I feel that you should blah, 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 right? <laughs> That's not a feeling. It has to be, you need to put a real feeling in there. Mad, glad, angry, sad, overwhelmed, frustrated, scared, anxious, I don't care. So I feel scared. I feel overwhelmed. I feel anxious. I feel angry. I feel whatever. You can use more than one feeling. It's fine. But do not go into action. I feel that you need to or anything like that. It shouldn't be followed by I feel that. Okay, there's no that. It's just I feel and the name of the feeling. Trust me, this is one that messes people up quite a bit. Two, when you say the when you part, I feel when you, keep it short and sweet. Do not list the last 20 things your partner did that upset you. Keep it to the situation at hand and say it in as few words as possible. The longer you talk, the more likely you are to lose your audience. Third, you might not know what you need. You might say, I feel sad and frustrated when you come home late and don't call first and then not be sure what's next. Maybe you're tired of asking to be called earlier in the day. Maybe you're tired of being ignored and just feel hopeless so you can't think of a, any I need statement to, to put in there. That's okay. You can just skip it. Just stick with the I feel X when you Y and leave it at that. You don't always have to have the I need part. Lastly, I want you to get underneath the anger. Anger is a top emotion. It's not at the core. If your answer is, I feel angry when you blah, blah, I'd like you to take a moment and see what's there besides the anger. I know you feel angry, but what else is there? In my experience, what's usually there is some type of fear or sadness. Your partner will respond better to your sadness than to your anger. I'm going to say that again. Your partner will respond better to your sadness than your anger, and that opens the door to better communication. Anger tends to put people on the defensive, and they get angry themselves, or it makes them silent and unwilling to even engage with you. When you show your partner your sadness and vulnerability, it generally makes them want to come towards you, not away from you. It's not usually your partner's intent to make you sad and they often want to rectify it and they want to see that you're happier. This is where communication happens. Now, depending on how you're consuming this information, you'll find a link to download the free, absolutely free instructions for the I Feel Formula 10-Minute Solution in the podcast notes on my blog or below the video. I'm so happy you joined me today. 
If you want more free DIY relationship tools, you've got to sign up for my weekly relationship cheat sheet. Depending on, again, how you're consuming this, you can click on the link below the video or in the podcast show notes or on my blog. I'd love to hear about your successes with this 10-minute solution. Make sure you comment so I can hear all about it.